Right on the gulf at Jumeirah Beach in oil-rich Dubai, filthy rich in fact, there's this mosque. On the face of it, it's an impressive, maybe grander version of plenty of mosques you'll see in this part of the world. For five days each week, with the unmistakable call to prayer, it operates normally, and on Fridays, a special sermon from the Imam. <laughs> But for the other two days of the week, on Thursdays and Sundays at 10, between the usual morning and lunchtime prayers, this beautiful sandstone building transmogrifies into a bold attempt to form a bridge, a conduit between the Islamic and non-Islamic worlds, between us and them. The instigators call their Outside the Square initiative Open Doors, Open Minds. And in very down-to-earth terms, it's aimed at precisely that. Opening its doors to non-Muslims who are prepared to open their minds. <laughs> Can everyone come closer, please? Not too close. <laughs> Great idea, but how does it work? Okay. Well, in short, it means that on two days every morning, week, everybody. Christians, Jews, Calathumpians, name your race, colour or religion, are freely admitted into the mosque, over there. something that's usually taboo to non-Muslims. So it's quite breakthrough stuff. The hands, three times. The mouth, three times. The program's run by an Emirati Muslim contact of yours truly. It's refreshing. Abdullah bin Sirkal, a Dubai businessman who dabbles very successfully in property and real estate. And around here, there's plenty of both. What Abdullah's curious non-Muslim observers get amounts to a crash course in Islam, including the pre-prayer cleansing and his usually very private Mecca-directed praying itself. <laughs> then this objected to a pretty painless lecture from Abdullah on Islam's five pillars that there's no God but Allah. You call him Allah, you call him God, you call him um, Allahim, as long as... Praying five times a day, the obligatory Muslim charity, the once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage to Mecca. Um, used to be a month traveling in the old days. Nowadays, it's about six, hour, six hours drive in a good car. And the pillar that intrigues so many non-Muslims, all that fasting during the month of Ramadan, including, as Abdullah puts it, the husband and wife thing. You can marry up to four, but you have to be equal and fair. I'm translating the verse to you. That done, there's a chatty Q&A where no question's out of order. From why no women in the Grand Mosque? Me personally, I wouldn't have a concentration if the nice woman's skin is touching my arm. Would you? Ah, would you? Okay, he's honest. Um, to how many wives does he, Abdullah, have? Um, He's got two, by the way. And a Lebanese restaurant is not a local restaurant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Abdullah's got one of the sharpest and appropriately most open minds of any devout Muslim I've ever met. But here at his open mosque, I really wanted to catch up with this erudite, modern, moderate Muslim on more immediately pressing Islamic matters. Like, how should we be reacting to Hamas's victory in the occupied territories? I think I'll just use um, um, President Clinton's words. He said, definitely none of us wanted uh, Hamas to be in the, um, um, in, the government. in the government. But if it's good for the people, it will have to be good for us. Um, and we have to deal with it. Uh, remember, they were the ones who stood up for the people. They were the ones who are the patriots. Um, they are known for being um, sincere people, clean. Not corrupt. Not corrupt. Um, w were you shocked? I was, of course, in shock. I was uh, expecting them to be the majority of the um, opposition. Um, opposition. Yeah. Okay, maybe sharing. Um, but the people punished 
the others who are corrupt. As a lot of people in Israel and in Washington are saying, that this means the end of the peace process in the Middle East because Hamas are committed to violence, they've been responsible for suicide bombings, they are still committed to the destruction of the State of Israel. Do you think that it means... Do you want the, the truth? Yeah. Okay. The truth is, um, when it comes to hardline, they were... Um, they did not negotiate at all when it comes to the Palestinians' rights. But when Israel was bombing them, they retaliated. Are they terrorists? Do you, do you regard Hamas as the, a moderate Muslim, which I know you are? Do you regard Hamas as terrorists? Honestly, no. But what about the violence? I'm not with Hamas. I'm not defending them now. I'm just explaining. Um, defending your country and your land the right that is given to you by every religion, right? And we all share it in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Whenever someone defends his country with, for whatever reasons, right? He has the right to defend and die for his country or his family or his money, right? You but have to defend. But what about killing innocent ah, Israelis? That's the line that's there. So you think that Hamas, it's a fine line between being a resistance fighter and a terrorist. Yes, okay. But you don't condone the killing of innocent Israeli people by Hamas. No, I'm against killing the innocent people, of course. I'm totally against What them. about the recognition of Israel? They say they're, they're, they've not yet said whether they'll ever recognize Israel. How can they negotiate peace without recognizing the state of Israel? Everyone is in shock now, mm. but once things settle um, and in a very mature way, and the Europeans have uh, said it yesterday that, um, and even the Israelis, that more majority of the Isra Israelis realize now that they will have to negotiate with um, Hamas. Um, Hamas will, it's a destiny. They claim that they listen to the word of God mm. or follow the book of God. If Hamas says they will comply and they will sign a peace treaty, when they do that with the Israelis, they will. If they are true Muslims and read the book of God, they will have to negotiate a peace course, without course. guns, without of the course. killing. It's a totally, now, now they're talking about reality. They are, now they're in, in power. Now they're dealing with it day to day, um, serving the people. They are in government. And um, I have a feeling uh, if both sides are mature enough to um, sit down and discuss the difficult, the most difficult points, this is one of the best periods that both Palestinians and Israelis will... Um, so you think good could come from this? Good could come if dirty hands do not play on both sides. Do you think they will ever really recognize this? Even if they give up the guns, will they ever recognize the right of Israel to exist? They have to uh, live with reality, of course. And that's the reality. Of course. I mean, uh, how ca you, you can't say th uh, th throw Israel in the, in, the, in, the, in the ocean or in the sea. They will have to change. When you are in the opposition, you can throw words. But when you are in power, you have to achieve those words. And the words count. We've talked about this before. Is it still the case that if the situation in Israel and the occupied territories between the Israelis and the Palestinians is not resolved peacefully, there will never be peace in this region. Quite apart from Iraq, Iran, the war on terror, until that situation is resolved, nothing else will be. Yes. Um, what worse could happen? This is the choice of the people. We believe in democracy. The West believes in democracy. Deal with it. You were shocked by Hamas winning. Were you shocked by the change that Sharon introduced when he formed Kadima, when he was, said he's going to give back land, he wants to negotiate peace. Did that come as a shock? Sharon is a very um, uh, experienced, or was a very experienced, and um, um, I think he also realized while he was in power that you're talking about three million or four million living in Palestine, six million in, around, in, the, uh, in the world of uh, Palestinians. What are they going to do with it? Uh, outnumbered. Yes. So he is being practical and realistic. There's some kind of fear in the, in the leadership in Israel to give the Palestinians anything. In your eyes, again, as a moderate Muslim, 
big difference between Hamas as resistance fighters who killed Israelis and Al-Qaeda who are terrorists. How can so many people with so many points of view still regard themselves as Muslims doing Allah's will? It's the way the um, people um, interpret the, um, the Quran. The Hamas way is that they've been attacked. Palestine, the Palestinians were living there. The Israelis uh, terrorized them. That's Hamas way of lo looking at it. Hamas is defending themselves and um, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda is a youth, young um, generation which have um, unfortunately supported um, by the West during the Russian invasion in Afghanistan. Fighting with the Americans against the Russians. Yes, they were heroes. They were heroes. Um, but those young youth suddenly from heroes and mujahideen suddenly they're uh, terrorists. terrorists. Um, they look at the West that they control the Muslim world and they take everything they, they're occupying the through puppets ruling in the Islamic world this is the way they look at it so they want to free the Muslim world mm -hmm. by any uh, means by any including means including terrorism by any means do you regard a man like Osama bin Laden as a true Muslim if he's still alive uh, or is he an aberration of, of Islam uh, if you're asking me if he's sincere about his uh, message and what he's doing, he wants to free the Muslim world. He's sincere in that. Is that right, what he's doing? In, in the religion of Islam, you have to refer to the um, scholars and the committee of scholars. And he doesn't. He made up his own mind. And Prophet Muhammad warned us in the end of the time they will be youth um, that will be very unexperienced and hyper. Um, they would pray and they would read the Quran more than you, all of you. You would even look at you, them and say, I'm nothing compared to them. But um, they will cause a lot of problems to you because they do not fully understand not the whole picture of the message of so Prophet, he's, he's Prophet Muhammad. In English we say lost the lost the plot. He's lost the Islamic plot. He uh, thinks what he's doing is right but it's not. He chose war. Is he as much an enemy of Islam and of Muslims as he is of the West and America? He's um, making the Muslims and the Islam looks very bad. King Abdullah of Jordan says that uh, moderate Muslims, you know, devout but not extremist, politically extremist Muslims, don't speak up enough. Is that a big part of the problem? You know why? Because the media have concentrated and went to those who have appointed themselves speakers in behalf of Islam. Who appointed them? They did. And then the media rushed to them. So you're saying it's too hard for voices like yours to be heard? Yes, because the, the media likes that uh, exciting violence and um, they've immediately, um, and they broadcast it daily to the, um, to the rest of the world. Thank you, media. We, are, we hate each other. What's next? Can we hear from the 1,000 million real Muslims? And you're right. They should really um, speak up. The Israeli elections are coming up next month. Whether Ariel Sharon lives or dies, his new centre party, Kadima, looks like winning government. But if the, if the extremists in Israel got power, with Hamas in power in Palestine, where would that leave us? In um, Al Jabra, there's a, uh, it says minus and minus gives plus, right? <laughs> <laughs> Two minuses give plus. Two, yes. <laughs> So I think they both have tried everything. Yeah. 
and they both sides are uh, um, kind of uh, condemning each other and uh, but they, what they're actually saying um, we've had enough we've had enough let's find something can someone like come out with the something that keeps our face do you know what I mean safe a solution face, safe face safe face um, but still find a solution let's find a solution people are suffering how do you describe a Muslim with your attitude with your values with your approach to this the, the best is to call it the true the true Islam is, true Islam the true Islam is you're asking awesome? me a lot of political questions <laughs> and I'm not a political it, person remember I'm a real estate person I know you are a real estate person <laughs> it's wonderful to talk to you again my friend thank you so much so you're the most politically aware real estate agent I've ever met <laughs> I'd love to sell you an apartment <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could <laughs>